Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to the Fallen of World War II. This video is 18 minutes long, so I'm gonna make it two parts. This is going to be part one, nine minutes, and second part, I know the, the, the rest of the 18 minutes. But yeah, please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content, comment on what you see next, and subscribe for more content. I'm still surprised at how little Russia is recognized for the allies winning World War II against the Nazis. But yeah. Let's get into it. The average lifespan of an American is 80 years. And an 80-year-old today was 10 when World War II ended, 4 when it began. A soldier who saw battle would have to be in his late 80s, at least today. Generals, political leaders, the decision makers of the war, few are still with us. And over the past few decades, we've seen authors and filmmakers rush to capture stories from survivors before this connection of memory is lost. Mm -hmm. Just a question, how many World War II survivors do you know? Do you have some people in your family who witnessed World War II? Maybe they were in the army or they were civilians who lost parents or something like that. I wonder how many survivors of World War II you know. I know one of my grandfathers is not really my grandfather, but, you know, big family. He was a veteran of World War II. He passed away around, uh, I think, 10 years ago. But yeah. This project is not about individual war stories, and it's not about survivors. We're going to tally up the tens of millions of people whose lives are cut short by the war and see how these numbers stack up to other wars in history including trends in recent conflicts. We'll be counting soldiers and civilians separately. Each of these figures represents 1,000 people who died. Wow. Civilians were of all walks of life. Whereas military deaths were almost entirely men. The average age was about 23. In most battles, for every 1,000 soldiers killed, there are more than 1,000 who were injured. The word casualty can be confusing because in military speak, it often includes both deaths and injuries and anything else that takes a soldier out of service. Here, we're just counting the deaths and we'll begin with American soldiers. Over 400,000 died. Whoa. 400,000. I thought America entered the world only, I think, one or two years before the war, the, the war ended. And still, they had this many people who died. Most of the deaths occurred in the European theater, fighting the Nazis. And about a quarter were in the Pacific, fighting the Japanese. When you put them on the timeline, you see that casualties were the heaviest at the end of the war. The war began on September 1st, 1939. But the U.S. wasn't willing to join the fight until Pearl Harbor, two years in. The deaths increased drastically on... Wait, I thought Pearl Harbor was in 1944. I didn't know it was in 1940. I thought Japan only attacked them towards the end of the... I didn't know they attacked them this early. D-Day, when the Allies invaded Normandy. One of the most drastically on D-Day, when the Allies invaded Normandy. One of the most tragic moments of the war was on D-Day at Omaha Beach, where 2,500 Americans fell. In one day. So about the same number of U.S. soldiers died on this single beach land as the entire 13 years of the recent war in Afghanistan. The bloodiest battle in the Pacific was Okinawa, which lasted 82 days, during which 12,500 Americans died. Wait, did America fight Japan in Japan? The Japanese in Japan? I thought they only dropped the bombs in Japan. I didn't know they went there fighting them face to face. This is news to me. About 5,000 of these deaths were at sea from kamikaze attacks. 
Now let's look at some other countries, starting with Europe. Germany started World War II when it invaded Poland. Mm -hmm. Poland ultimately lost 200,000 soldiers in the war. Okay. Most died after the invasion while the country was occupied by Germany and the Soviet Union. Wow. Wait. Did they say the country was occupied by Germany and... Let me put on the subtitles. Did they say and the, 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 US, the Soviet Union? Union. Most died after the invasion while the country was occupied by Germany and the Soviet Union. Wait, I thought the Russians won the war. I thought. Wait. Didn't Russia fight against the Germans? And uh... so, how did Germany and Russia both occupy Poland at the same time? Germany, meanwhile, lost just 16,000 in the invasion of Poland. The Nazis went on to invade and conquer other countries, including Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Greece, and Yugoslavia. France surrendered, but after losing 92,000 soldiers in the Battle of France. Over 200,000 ultimately fell, which includes deaths in POW camps, French colonies, and other fighting. Wait, France had less, less soldiers died? Who died than America and France was at the like at the front no not the front at the center of World War two and yet America had 400,000 something and French France only had half of that okay Yugoslavia suffered almost half a million military deaths the initial invasion brought relatively few casualties on both sides but the deaths mounted under Nazi occupation due to guerrilla fighting, civil conflict, and mass executions. The Nazi invasions were swift, with relatively few German losses. Even the Nazi commanders expressed surprise at their success. And then we have the United Kingdom and the United States, who were not invaded, but took the fight to the Nazis. Britain lost about the same number of soldiers as the US, which includes the British colonies. Germany lost about half a million soldiers fighting the U.S. and Britain in what is known as the Western Front, which took place in France and Belgium. So you're telling me that America lost more soldiers, more soldiers than France and more soldiers than England, even though England and France were at the center of World War II, at the center of the battlefield? I didn't know this. But most Nazi soldiers died in the Eastern Front, Germany's unsuccessful invasion of the Soviet Union. The numbers are staggering. The most famous battle of the Eastern Front, and perhaps the turning point of the European war, was Stalingrad. The German Sixth Army successfully took Stalingrad, but then got surrounded by the Soviets and cut off from food and ammunition. Half a million Nazis would ultimately die in Stalingrad. In one battle, another 100,000 were taken prisoner, of which 6,000 would ever return. POWs had a low survival rate throughout World War II, and it was particularly grim in the East. When you include these POWs, roughly the same number of Germans died in Stalingrad as all the Western Front fighting against France, the UK, and the US. Oh. And though Stalingrad was a victory for the Soviets, they suffered almost twice as many losses as Germany. The Soviet Union would eventually defeat the once unstoppable German army, killing 2.3 million Nazi soldiers. 2.3 million Nazi soldiers. Russia, man. Oh, they're dead. But winning the war came at a cost. Whoa. Till now.
8.7 million is the official tally by the Russian military, a hotly disputed number. Some studies have calculated as many as 14 million dead. Wow. So Russia alone lost more people in World War II than any than all of the other countries combined, including Germany. Is that no, it cannot be just because of the battle of Stalingrad. I think only two point some million died in that battle. And earlier in the video, they said that Poland and German, like you know, the, the, the Germans and the Soviet Union were ruling Poland at the same time. So how did they, how did it happen that they, 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 they went their own ways and started fighting against each other? And when I think of World War II, I always think about US, uh, France and Great Britain. I never thought about uh, Russia like this. I didn't know that Russia suffered more death than any other country, than all of the all other countries combined. That's crazy. To complete the count of European military deaths, we need to add German deaths from other fronts, including the North and Africa, as well as deaths from other Axis powers allied with the Nazis, Hungary, Romania, and Italy. Mm. When you put these European military debts on the timeline, it looks like this. You can now interact with the chart to learn more. Pause the narration if you'd like more time. And now we switch to civilian deaths in Europe. Wait, the 14 million who died were only soldiers in Russia. We know even counting civilians yet. Six million Jewish people were killed in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. If you separate this by country, you see that about half, 2.7 million, were Polish. 700,000 were Soviets, followed by Hungary and 17 other countries. Mm. Wait, I didn't know this. I thought when I think of the Holocaust, I always thought that uh, all the Jews who died in the Holocaust were German Jews. I didn't know you had Polish and uh, Russian Jews and from other countries as well. I didn't know that. Broken down another way, about half of the six million were killed in the concentration camps. Over a million died in Auschwitz. Most were killed in the gas chambers. Others died from starvation, exhaustion, disease, and other forms of execution. The second most deadly camp was Treblinka, which was exclusively an extermination camp, set up to look like a train station. Mobile killing groups killed 1.4 million Jews. Like with the gas chambers, men were killed first to reduce the risk of revolt. No, it's crazy. You may not agree with my take on this, but it's crazy that the descendants of the people who suffered the Holocaust are bombing women and children and men in Gaza right now. Uh, I find that crazy. The Holocaust also includes non-Jewish deaths. Between 130,000 to 500,000 Roma, then called gypsies, were killed. The numbers are disputed. Okay. I didn't know this. About yet. a quarter million people with disabilities were killed. Homosexuals, Catholics, and other groups were also exterminated, but their numbers were relatively small. Some historians say that other civilian deaths should go under the label of Holocaust. About 2 million non-Jewish Poles were killed under German occupation. Some of it were sent to the gas chambers at Auschwitz. When you combine civilian and military deaths, 
over 16% of the total Polish population died in World War II, which is the highest percentage of any country. But not the highest in total death count. The Soviet Union again tops that list, losing at least as many civilians as it did soldiers, somewhere between 10 and 20 million. A particularly dark what? in total death count. The Soviet Union again tops that list, losing at least as many civilians as it did soldiers. Wow. Somewhere between 10 and 20 million. A particularly dark moment for the Soviet Union was the siege of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. German forces surrounded Leningrad before civilians could be evacuated. Supplies, including food, were cut off for two and a half years. One and a half million people died as a result, mostly from starvation, mostly civilians. Shit. Stalin's cruelty towards his own people is partly responsible for these numbers. Huh? He often didn't allow civilians to evacuate from cities, thinking Why? it would cause the soldiers protecting them to fight harder. About a million Soviets died in Stalin's own labor camps, called the Gulag. Really? Just about every country suffered civilian losses. Wait, why was he doing this to his people while the, the, the Germans were doing even worse than this? <sighs> it doesn't make sense. Especially countries who were invaded. While many died as a result of so-called collateral damage, the biggest numbers occurred when it was no accident. Civilians were exterminated, purposely fired upon or bombed, used as human shields, or intentionally deprived of food. The intentional killing of civilians was done by most warring parties, including the United Kingdom and the United States. Hmm. The United Kingdom was spared of a land invasion, but still lost 60,000 civilians, largely from German air raids or blitzes, often directed at civilian population centers. Okay. The UK did the same to German cities at a much greater magnitude, causing about 10 times the number of deaths. But most German civilian deaths came from the ground at the late stage of the war. When the Nazi regime collapsed, Civilians living in occupied regions had to desperately flee from the advancing Soviet army. Rapes were widespread, and death estimates ranged from 600,000 to 3 million. Let's step back and see where we are with the totals. 20 we just counted about 20 million civilian deaths in Europe. If you add this to the European military deaths we already covered, it brings us to over 40 million. Then we have the Asian theater. Here we see the vast majority of military deaths in Asia came from China and Japan. China. On the civilian side, about 6 million deaths from China, Indonesia, Korea, Indochina, and the Philippines can be attributed to Japanese war crimes, which are sometimes compared to the Nazi atrocities due to the sheer scale of the cruelty. China had the second highest death count after the Soviet Union. And like the Soviets, the Chinese government demonstrated a stunning willingness to sacrifice its own people. <laughs> Chinese nationalists opened the dike at the Yellow River, hoping the flood would halt the Japanese advance. Half a million Chinese civilians or more were killed, which is two or three times the number who died in all countries in the 2004 Asian tsunamis. But the invasion of China only cost Japan 200,000 soldiers. Most were killed fighting the U.S. and allies in the Pacific War. A significant portion of Japanese civilian deaths were caused by American firebombing and the two nuclear attacks. Contrary mm -hmm. to official U.S. statements, these airstrikes were directed at civilian populations, not yep. military targets. Yep. When you add all the deaths outside of Europe, I think America was sending a message to the world, especially to the Soviet Union, telling them, do not think. Because I feel like uh, I've seen someone say that the Soviet won the war. And so because of this, America had to, uh, they had to, how do you call it? They had to find a way to come on top. And bombing Japan was that i've seen someone like i've seen someone explain to saying that the soviet won world war ii or they were the cause of the allies winning world war ii and so america had to find a way to say nah we still on top and so they bombed japan because i've seen reports saying that uh the american president at the time i don't know if it is roosevelt or or, or who that they knew that japan was going to surrender before they bombed the two cities but still they bombed them. I don't know how true those reports are though. 
it brings us to a grand total of 70 million for the war, give or take, depending on who's counting and what civilian deaths get included. More people died in World War II than in any other war in history. For comparison, here are 20 or so of the very worst wars and atrocities we have on record. Some of these are more of atrocities than wars, but we've seen how that distinction can get blurry. Some of these spanned across centuries. World War II had the highest body count, and it all happened in just six years. <laughs> the world's population has grown significantly since the earliest atrocities on this list. If you want to compare them in terms of what percentage of the world died, we can adjust the chart to look like this. This rough approximation mm -hmm. tells us there may have been more devastating wars before World War II, proportionally speaking. Wow. What is this one, the, the what revolt? Percentage of the world died. The Lucian and Lucian, Lucian revolt? I don't know. What is, what's that? least atrocities on this list. When did that happen? If you want to compare them in terms of what percentage of the world died, we can adjust the chart to look like this. This rough approximation tells us there may have been more devastating wars before World War II, proportionally speaking. And even though they have counted a lot of people, they didn't count the people who were from Africa, probably not even listed the people from India and all the colonies probably not even listed. So I'm sure if you count those people, more than way more than 70 million people died in World War II. When we turn to post-war conflicts, it's hard to say anything that isn't controversial. But the data shows something quite extraordinary has been happening. In 1989, John Gaddis coined the phrase, the long peace, to identify the absence of conflict between the nuclear powers during the Cold War. 25 years later, the Cold War is over and the term is still being used, although its meaning may have shifted. European countries have not fought each other, except for this 10 day war in 1956, when the Soviet Union invaded Hungary. Mm. When we look at European wars before World War II, it looks like this. They tend to be more frequent as you go back, though smaller in scale. And the largest 44 economies of the world have not battled each other since World War II. Rich countries have fought poorer countries, like the US versus Iraq. But rich countries have not fought other rich countries. Such a period of peace between the so-called great powers hasn't been seen since the Roman Empire. To many, peace is too strong of a word. Wars have occurred since World War II, and they can be grouped into these four categories. We don't see colonial wars anymore. We've already noted that interstate wars between rich countries have not occurred at all. And here we see wars involving smaller economies have tapered off. That leaves civil wars of two types, with and without farm intervention. And this is what these battle deaths look like alongside of World War II. More people died fighting in World War II than in all the wars since. Wow. And again, we can't forget about world population, which has almost tripled since World War II. If we scale these numbers to show deaths in proportion to world population, showing the likelihood that a person on Earth dies in battle, the downward trend becomes even more pronounced. Now, this isn't to infer anything about why this trend is occurring. That's a discussion for another day. You can now interact with this chart to explore what conflicts are behind the totals. Now, bear in mind, we're just looking at battle deaths here, not civilian deaths, but those two are in decline. Peace is a difficult thing to measure. It's a bit like counting the people who didn't die in wars that never happened. Yeah. We give such importance to the word peace, but we don't tend to notice it when it occurs or report on it. Sometimes it takes reminding ourselves of how terrible war once was to see the peace that has been growing around us. Of course, this trend may not continue. And it's not clear how looking at these charts can help us make the right decisions to ensure that it does. But the longer the long peace grows, the more significant it becomes. 
So if watching the news doesn't make us feel hopeful about where things are heading, watching the numbers might. This was good. If you would like to support this project and encourage new episodes, please. Yeah, let me go subscribe to this channel right now. This was this was so good. And if you like the video, please do, for, uh, do not forget to go to his page and like the video and subscribe to his. Let me like it to his channel. And that was that was so great. That was some great content. I thought I was going to pause it halfway, but it was too good for me to pause it. I didn't even know when I passed the, the, the mark where I was supposed to pause it. But yeah, and uh, I also, how do I say this? I lost my train of thought.